shape. Today I'm going to show you how to shape a straw hat. First thing to do is to get a good quality pot. A lot of people might try to do this with an open pot, but you're going to need something with a nozzle. Some people will even make this finer with uh, tin foil or something like that, but this usually seems to be fine. So you can fill it if you have hot water, this will make this process shorter, but either way, usually try to fill it a third, maybe not any more than a half because it will boil over. No matter how much you try, that's probably going to happen. So you may, in this process, have to fill this once or twice. And now we wait. So here's a hat that's already been shaped. You see the crown. We can talk about different types of crowns that you can get. But when you buy one from a store, you have the choice of an open crown, which this is blank. And often with an open crown, you also have a flat brim. So a lot of times you'll buy a hat like this. And it's not uncommon to want to customize this. You don't have to wear that shape. There's some limitations, whether it's been you know cracked over or some different things like that. But when you buy one from a store, this is this is what you get. So today we're gonna we're gonna take one that's been shaped before, try to customize it a little bit, show you some of the things you can do and the limitations you have if it's already been cracked, and I'll kind of show you that. Okay, so you've been waiting for your pot to start to boil. You need to wait till you see steam like this. If it's trickling out, you might be able to get something done, but it needs to be pretty aggressive like this. One thing to remember and think about is where your steam's going. If you have this under something like that, you're gonna get some condensation and you'll really start to see that when you put it on a hat. So with straw hats, there's a lot of not to do's or a big do not do list, maybe more so than in a felt. So one of those is you can get these too hot. And so to get it too hot, that would mean you need to stick it too close. And what will happen is there's a lacquer on this. So this is, this is just like grass woven together. And then they put a lacquer, which is like a glue. And if you get that too hot, it'll either melt that or burn that. And you can see that on some hats that have been shaped multiple times. It kind of looks gray or smoky. It doesn't necessarily ruin the hat, but especially if you get a nice white hat, you'll, you'll see that pretty quickly. So one of those big not to do is just get it too hot. Now, the way that this works is you do need to get it warm to make this malleable or move. In a straw hat, you have an extra advantage. Some people see it as an advantage and maybe a disadvantage. Around the entire exterior of this hat is a wire. So unlike in a felt hat, you can kind of make this hat do some stuff that a felt hat wouldn't do. So you can get crisper corners. You can get you know taller sides, different things like that. And so you'll see maybe more dramatic looks in a straw than you'd ever see in a felt. So I'm gonna start with this guy. We're gonna pretend that this was you know, already shaped and it kind of looks like that way, it's not an open crown. So I'm gonna put a crown in this to emulate what you might buy at a store and then some ways to customize it. So I'm gonna start with the center line, which has already been started. A lot of places will start with that. If it's not you know, center down the hat, it will show whether your face is crooked or not. Uh, depending on the hat, that can be adjusted a little bit you know, to be slightly off center so that it you know, maybe looks more center even if it sits crooked on your head. But what you see here is me warming up this lacquer. So I'm staying about, I don't know, four to six inches. You can certainly go back further. It's gonna take you longer. So if you're just starting out, maybe start further back, lots of motion. If I got close, we might burn it. It also will condensate just like it would under here. So you would get water droplets. Not the worst thing to have happen. So how do I know it's warm enough? If I take it off of there and I touch it and it feels warm, warm enough. So I'm gonna just take my fingers down the center of this hat. A lot of people will do this from up top. If you look like this, I can see the middle of this hat and you can stretch that out, do whatever you need to do. Especially with straws, I try to go way conservative at first. If I go and put some pretty stark lines, so this to me is a stark line. This would be less stark, more rounded. If I put a stark line, it actually creases the hat. You'll hear people say that they, they crease their hats. Well, that's exactly what happens. And over time, it gets stretch marks there. So if, if you don't know for sure what you want, if you're wanting it to be a certain height, go a little higher, a little more round, and slowly work it to the spot that you want. So I'm gonna make sure that these edges are round. I might want them square at some point in time, but I don't want to accidentally crease it, especially with the straw, you're gonna have that propensity to do that. In a felt, you have a little bit more grace. With this, you don't. So I'm just gonna go kind of round it first. And usually this stuff cools really fast. And if you, especially if you step away from your, your heat source, it'll cool pretty quick. Felts don't cool as quick, it's just a denser material. So now that it's kind of round, now that it's kind of center, um, I 
think that it's a really good idea to look at your hat off of the steam more than you're sitting on the steam. That will allow it to cool and allow you to make good decisions on what's level, what's not. Okay, so once you get the top, as far as the exact top, uh, the way you want it, we're going to put some divots in. So this is where you get to make some decisions. Different disciplines, whether you're a rough stock rider, whether you're a cowboy, where your dad wore it, somebody you like, you're going to decide, you know, based off of that, what you want on the side. So even if you want a big cattle and crown, which I'll kind of push this in and pull it out, which would be a pretty decent sized divot. Okay. Even if you want that, I would recommend starting with something smaller. So we'll go back on the heat. Now, I just move that around without having heat. That's a bad idea with the new hat. And when the lacquer is fresh, it will make a cracking sound. Not good. So you need to make sure if you're going to mess around with your hat, it needs to be warm. So I'm going to get this pretty warm and then I'm going to take it right here and you can look real close. I'm going to put my thumbs in and I'm just going to make a center divot just like this. Now that's not going to do much. So I'm going to pull that guy out just a little bit. Try to keep my hands the same. Okay. And I'm going to hold this as you can see off the heat until it starts to feel cool. If you're someone like me who doesn't like to wait, you might be able to waft it a little bit and it'll cool off. So there's that divot. You see that one. So in order to make this divot very symmetrical, because that's what we're going for, the difference between someone who looks like they know what they're doing and someone who doesn't is often comprised in the way that they wear their clothing, especially their hat. So I'm going to get this side warm, and then I'm going to look at where that divot's at, put my hands at the center of that one, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I push down. And I pull out and I might look right here. This first time you do this, it might not be center. And you can see this is an older hat, so nothing is super crisp. But from a distance, you can look and see. This divot looks like this. Oh, that divot looks bigger. So I'm gonna start working on this one. Work again, so you can work back and forth. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on these divots. We can make another video on you know different ones and a good place to hold your hand. But I really, really recommend being very conservative, making a smaller, uh, bump in that side before we go anywhere else that'll kind of keep the integrity of this roundness if you take These these out too far. It's gonna kind of leave a divot there that you may or may not want So once you get to that now, it's time to shape the brim So if you get this already creased which this one is, you know, I would call this creased or cracked over There's already a bend in this wire now if it's bent over hard it can break That's pretty hard to do unless you have something stomp it uh, but it's kind of want to be going to want to be tattooed there. And so if you don't like how, how narrow it is or how far out it is, you need to start there. So what I do is try to relax the rest of the hat and then fix the wire. So to relax the hat, you're going to heat the whole brim. Now this is going to take a little bit of time. And for, for video sake, I'm not going to probably release this thing as much as a normal person would, but I'm just going to get everything warm until it feels warm on my hand. Then I'm going to flip it over. And warm this side and this is one of those one of those times when shaping hats you can kind of work pretty fast just so you don't accidentally heat something up too much okay so I'm gonna go over to the board here and show you what I would do so we're gonna make this narrower since this is pretty wide this would be maybe for uh, a lady or someone that wants uh, a narrower face person that feels that they're wearing something that's too big so you'd set it down on the board and you can see this has a lot of memory in it. So this is how you would relax it. You're not going to probably get all of this pre, um, I don't know, the, the want of this hat to stay up. You're probably not going to get all of that out, but you can get some of it out. So if you feel like you need to go back to the heat to do it again, you can. Before you move these corners, I'm going to go back to the heat. Just heat where the corner is at. Once again, again going really fast so that I don't overheat something. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to put my thumbs, what I think is perfectly even where I want the corners to be. And then I'm going to bring my fingers out right here. And then I'm going to take my other fingers and I'm going to bend that guy just like that. Nothing crazy. I'm going to come back and see, does that still look level? I'm looking down the hat, my thumbs being even on both sides. Okay. So you can see where it was and where it is. So once you get those, you hold it back just like you did with your crown. Does it look even? and level with the middle of your hat it might it might not and it's not because you did anything wrong it's just this is a very complex shape to master so when you think you've got your sides put in there you may not want them super high up um, but this is where we get to decide now these are the rules everyone breaks these depending on the style but this is my rule the narrower you go here the higher your sides have to be it's because when you did that 
you basically tell the rest of the hat that it needs to be higher. If you want to go flatter, that is absolutely fine, your choice. The hat is going to want to work up. Hats will tell you what they want to do. So if you do that and you decide, man, that seems pretty high, I don't necessarily like that look, the first place to start is not bringing this down, it's bringing this out. That's gonna make the hat want to stay where you wanted it to be. But we're gonna say that we want this hat to be pretty far up. You could call this you know, more of a Texas look, a cutter look, it doesn't really matter. Anybody, anywhere can wear any style. So now that I got that, I'm gonna heat this side of the hat and I'm gonna bring this side up, okay? So here I go. I think that a lot of people forget this very simple fact. When you heat the hat, it's going to bend where you heat it, okay? So if I wanna work a certain part of this, I need to heat that more than somewhere else. Notice I totally neglected this side because I'm not shaping that right now. However, this hat is one piece, so it will move together even though I don't heat that other side. So this is how I do it. Here's my corner. I'm gonna put my hands in the center of the hat and I'm just gonna pull both hands until my fingers get to the corner, okay? That's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna pull that, try not to bend it over, try not to crank on it. All I'm gonna do is just try to slowly make the hat want to stay together. And what that's going to do, this is an older hat, you can see, but it's gonna make this entire side work together, okay? If I did not do that, maybe only the front half would be bending and the back, back half would be down. Now that's a style look that you might wanna do. So before I get real critical about what this looks like, I'm gonna to go to the other side and match it. You will go insane trying to get perfection too early until you get this, this entire hat trying to work together. So with the straw, you still get it pretty warm. And at the beginning of this video, I was staying pretty far back. I'm kind of getting pretty close here. That's something you might get more comfortable doing over time. So same thing here. I'm going to put my hat on my stomach, hands in the center, and I'm just going to try not to bend it over or do anything like that. I'm just trying to make one continuous line nice and quiet. And you can hear this hat creaking. That's not necessarily bad. However, that means I might be working it too hard. Okay, so just based off of those, this hat's gonna cool and move a little bit. You can see, and I'll show you, the symmetry is not necessarily terrible. You know, there's a few things that are going wrong. And so now when I work on symmetry, I'm gonna work on the entire hat at the same time. So if I did this process and this whole side was down, that means I need to come back to this side and bring it back up, just as a, as a rule of thumb, okay? So now we're talking about symmetry. So it's never gonna be perfect, and over time, your tolerance for Perfection will go down because it's just the way it is. One area that separates a handy person from a dink, and that's just the way it is, is right here in your hat. Now, if it is straight off, some people some people like that, but in order for this hat to stay in this shape, to stay consistent, you do need it to come down a little bit. So that's called the dip. And you can basically tell if someone actually does something agriculture with their life or cares about the way they look based on whether or not there's a little bit of a dip or a natural swoop in their hat. Yes, it's a style thing, but it's actually very practical to keep these sides from wanting to go too far up, different things like that. So I'm heating both sides, okay? Because I'm gonna be bending right here, nothing crazy, but I wanna put heat where I'm gonna bend it. So here's how you do this. You can do it like this, where you put your hands where you want the dip, put your fingers in the corner and go. Now, that can happen too fast if you're not ready for it. Here's another way that I learned. If you put your hand in the back of the hat and rest the front on your arm, you can slowly do this like this. Totally your choice. I would recommend this one at first. The only issue I have with this, it's hard to tell if I'm pushing down even. So do this just a little bit. What that's going to do is gonna make a break over. So here it's gonna be normal, and it's gonna break over nice and flat, okay? So the worst thing you can do is go too much too fast. Same way we did with the crown. This hat will be right if you don't overwork one side or the other. So I'm going to do it like this because I feel like I can control this just a little bit better. So there's two last spots we're gonna work on this hat. And I do think hats are kind of a work in progress to some degree. You don't wanna shape your hat every day, okay? So we're close on symmetry. This side looks as high as this side, they look far the same distance apart. So there's two last places to work on the hat. You can certainly go back to the crown as well. But it's the very, very front and the back. 
So there's that wire running through there. We've done a bunch of stuff to this wire. So this is without heat, you can get a lot done. So when I look at this hat, I see that this side wants to bend out and do some stuff. But the biggest thing I see is this kind of arch right there. That's not good. So I'm going to come right here and without heat, I'm just going to work this wire. So I'm just going to go to my corners and then I'm just going to inch my fingers together and try to change that arc almost down instead of up. So not flat, down instead of up. And I'm just working it to there, trying not to crack or break any part of this hat. I'm just thinking about the wire. So go back to my corners. I might do that a few times. And now I'm going to see what it looks like. Okay, now when you look at that, it might look like it's pointing down. So I might have went too far. So I'll come back and kind of fix that. So this is non-heat working. You can do this a lot with your hat, especially if you run into a door frame or something, you you know, make your, your wire bend, you can fix that. So I'm gonna fix these sides real quick, same thing. This side's kind of got a bubble. So I'm gonna hold the corner. The corner is the foundation on the outside of your hat. And I'm gonna hold this corner. Okay, so the last place to look, so this, there was two left. Here's one, and the last is back here. Same thing, this is a wire issue. So if you see something really goofy, it might be in the side, but if you did your job other ways, the other way, um, this should be close. So I'm gonna look at that. It's close enough for me. You'll see me kind of do this, which looks like I'm bending the side, but I'm actually bending the wire back there. So what I would recommend doing is kind of get it to where it's pretty good, and then go sit in front of a mirror and work your wire until it looks acceptable to you. You can come back to this hat, but just remember, if you're not working the wire, you need some heat, okay? So that's kind of how that works. Um, but honestly, for the most part, straws are really good to work on at first if you've not shaped hats much because there's a lot of forgiveness because of this wire, but you really do have to be careful with overheating them. But that's how you shape a straw hat.